Well, we are indeed, Byron, because we're having a quiet morning ourselves. So we decided to turn to some birds as well. And we've got some hornbills, yellow-billed hornbills, that are sort of showing quite interesting behavior. This hornbill went to the tree, pulled off a piece of bark, and then kind of showed it to the other one. And it almost looked as though it was a gifting kind of thing to be able to try and woo her for mating, which would be quite interesting because it's late in the season for any sort of mating. Now, where are you going? There's another pair up at the top, and I wonder if we're going to see a hornbill showdown about to develop. Listen, we can hear them calling. So it's really interesting. The ones on top were started first, and then the guys on the bottom were responding. Now the dove has just flown away. It's, it's not getting involved in this brawl that's about to take place. And here comes another. They're going up the tree slowly. Let's see how this all plays out. But it's a little hornbill showdown that we've got. Isn't this cool? Are they all yellow builds? That's the next question. Yes, they are, aren't they? It's the top two are also. Oh no, we've had a. F somebody flew and that scared everybody off. It seems like the intruders on top of the tree have been chased away because the two at the bottom are now left. And I wonder if there's going to be a little victory dance. It was all a bit anticlimactic. I thought we were going to see a lot more interaction than that. But oh well. That was still quite cool to see. I actually haven't seen hornbills sort of display at one another like that. So machine gun nest, you say that beak is quite a tool. Well, I couldn't agree more, machine gun nest. That is a serious beak that they've got. Fergo, are they giving you a hard time here? Yeah, oh, they were so well behaved before we came down here. I uh, know they were well behaved, but unfortunately this is what happens, is that they are birds and that means that they fly and generally fly quite fast. Uh, it's tucked itself up in amongst these quarry trees. And I wonder if they're not going to go back towards that big open tree. You'll often find hornbills will use open trees, one, because they can get a bit of sunlight in a cold morning, not that it's that cold this morning, but two, is that from there they can be able to watch for any little insect that moves around and we know hornbills are really good predators and when they see any insect they come flying down and grab it with that massive beak and then dispatch whatever they need to. You can see how it's sort of eyeballing. It's not only watching us but it tilts its head every now and then to look down and to try and see if there's any sign of any food down at the bottom. Now, there's one that's just on the edge there Ferg. You might be able to pick it up. There it is on the right. See how they're looking down? I wonder if there's not something moving around at the bottom here. Maybe there's a little grasshopper that's bounced around in the grass and they're now trying to find it. You can see they keep kind of sort of coming out and then they tilt their head slightly to see if there is anything here. There we go, see? Oh, and a yawn. Oh, good morning. morning. Welcome to this day. Now I think I can hear some impalas alarm calling behind me. So, Kirk, you saying, would a yellow and a red-billed ho hornbill produce an orange hornbill? Well, no, no, I don't think so, because they probably wouldn't mate. Although, sorry, I'm just a bit distracted because the impalas are going crazy behind me, and it seems like it's the exact same situation as yesterday, where we're just sitting, and the impalas are starting to alarm. Now, it could be just a male that's triggered this all off by starting his rutting snort, and the rest are just following up.